Hi Virgo, this is your September mid-month tarot reading. We'll have three separate spreads in this mid-month reading. In the first spread we'll be looking at new love coming towards you. In the second spread we'll check in with those of you who are already married or in a relationship. And then I'll do the love from the past, aka the X spread. Please like, share and subscribe to support this channel. This first spread is a new love in the second half of September. We have the moon clarified by the eight of swords. We have the sun, uh, then we have the six of wands clarified by the wheel of fortune. In the potential outcome we have uh, the fool with the ten of cups and the ten of pentacles and uh, we have the king of wands on the bottom of the deck. You could be dealing with a fire sign. There is there Sagittarius. Um, we also have Pisces on the table. Well, I love this reading, Virgo. I just love it. Okay. <laughs> um, when the moon and the sun showed up right after, one right after the other, I immediately remembered how some people refer to the moon and the sun when they come out in the same spread, especially one after the other. Yin and Yang. Yin and Yang. That's what the moon and the sun are sometimes referred to when they show up right after one after the other. Okay, so you guys complete each other, right? That would be one of the ways to interpret those two cards. Um, but uh, the moon could be a Pisces you're dealing with. And uh, the moon is a card of fear. A fear of the unknown. It's one of the most emotional cards in the deck. All right. It's also a card of a secret. Um, like some kind of a mysterious energy. Uh, the moon is qualified by the Eight of Swords. The Eight of Swords is a card of somebody who is stuck and trapped in their own thoughts. And uh, this is also a card of somebody who is overthinking. And uh, that could be you. Virgo, because I think this king of wands on the bottom of the deck who is coming towards you, I think this person is ready to go. They're ready to get the show on the road with you. Let, they're ready to get it started. I think you're going to hesitate a little bit, and I'll explain why. So yes, the king of wands on the bottom of the deck could be a, um, a fire sign, near is near Sagittarius, or somebody with a lot of fire in their chart. If they're not a fire sign, perhaps this is just somebody who is, uh, you know, easy to get up and go. They could be like a leader in their community. You know, that type of the energy. The Sun, by the way, uh, is one of the Leo major kind of cards. But at the same time, the Sun is a card of clarity. It's And it's the happiest card in the deck. Alright, with the Sun card, we always feel on top of the world. We always feel loved and cherished. Um, the full, the first card in the potential outcome. Let me jump the gun just for a second. The full is a prerequisite. The fall is what needs to happen for the two of you to move forward. Right? The fall is a card of taking a risk, taking a leap of faith. So perhaps uh, something about this person that is unusual, something that you're not used to. They could be from a different background, they could be doing something you're just not used to, um, and uh, you have a fear of moving forward, you have a fear of uh, uh, moving forward quickly, right? Because Virgos like to get to know the person, you like to take things slow, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. That's just the way you guys think, that's the way you guys operate, and that's pretty much it, period, right? However, perhaps with this person, uh, they want to move forward with you real quick, and perhaps that's what you're afraid of, that is not going to work out, or perhaps, again, like I said, something is unusual, something is different about this person, right? Nevertheless, we do have the Six of Wands in the middle, clarified by the Wheel of Fortune. I believe the Six of Wands belongs to this King of Wands, right? Uh, you see how the person in the Six of Wands is holding up a wand, and so is the King of Wands, right? It's the same person, it's a card of victory and success, perhaps it's going to be a little overwhelming for you, because, um, you know, the, the Six of Wands is a card of somebody is um, you know, somebody who is sure that of themselves. <laughs> Maybe a little too much for you, okay? Because they're coming in with the, with the notion of winning you over, having a success with you. They want to get this uh, show started with you with the Wheel of Fortune, right? The Wheel of Fortune is the start of a new cycle. So they're, they don't want to wait, okay? Or they just don't want to take as long as... Um, what you're you used to, okay? And we're back to the potential outcome. We have the Fool with the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles, right? The Fool could be an Aries, but again, the Fool is a card of taking a leap of faith, taking a risk, believing that it's going to work out. And I think it will. I think it will because we got the Ten of Cups and the Ten of Pentacles. Both of them are there. Just one of those two cards would have been enough for me to assume that things are going to be all right. When both of them show up, it's just a way of the universe to say, yes, I meant it. Yes, 
because both of them are commitment and marriage cards. Both of them are. Okay, the Ten of Cups is a very uh, emotionally fulfilling card. It's the happily ever after card. The Ten of Pentacles is more of a down to earth type of the energy. This is when people buy real estate together, uh, grow old together, have money in the bank. So, and you got both of them. So you're getting the best of both worlds with this person. Emotional fulfillment and practicality. You get a family and you also get money in the bank. <laughs> Virgo. All right. So yeah, um, I think it's going to be worth it. I think it's going to be worth it, Virgo. I really do. All right. Really happy for you. Congratulations. Virgo, if you are already me, right? Or if you're in a relationship, this bird is for you. We have uh, the Queen of Pentacles, clarified by the Ace of Wands. We have the Seven of Cups, the Ace of Swords, and the Six of Swords on the bottom of the deck. There's only one way for me to interpret this, Virgo. You are going to have some kind of an inspiration, um, or you will want to start something. You'll get all excited about it, but then you will be looking for a way to implement this, to get this started, and then eventually you will find a way to implement it or start it. <laughs> I don't know how your boyfriend, your girlfriend, or your spouse is going to come in, because this right here is pretty much all you. Okay? <laughs> it's pretty much all you. So speaking of you, you're the Queen of Pentacles here, the Ace of Wands clarifying you. It's that um, bright idea or some kind of an inspiration that you will have. Alright? Perhaps you may want to start a business or you will have an idea as to where you want to uh, go for your next vacation together with your person. Or you may want to uh, start doing something new, like a, a, a new interest. I don't know, body jumping or what have you. Right, the Seven of Cups, the next card over, this is you doing research, this is you looking at different ways to start this, to implement this, to get this off the ground. And uh, with the Ace of Swords, you will find it. Yep, the Ace of Swords is a card of clarity, it's the, uh, it's the uh, card of uh, somebody who is very decisive, it's a card of a new beginning. Perhaps with the Ace of Swords, you will talk with your person, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, your spouse, and let them know that you had this inspiration, you did the research, you know how to do this, let's do it. <laughs> the Six of Swords on the bottom of the deck, yeah, it's a card of moving forward. Okay, It could be a card of relocation, it could be a card of uh, traveling, um, or simply moving forward. All right? Cool. Let's see if anybody comes back from the past for you, Virgo, uh, in the second half of September. Keep in mind, it doesn't have to be the most recent X. We have uh, the High Priestess, Death, the World, and the Nine of Swords on the bottom of the deck. Well, to be honest, Virgo, I, I didn't even want to clarify anything. There is nothing here for you, except for suffering. Okay? Both Death and the World could be interpreted as cards of the end. Okay? They are ending cards. Um, the High Priestess, the first card I came out, is a card of intuition. So if somebody does come back from the past and uh, tries to get back together with you, and uh, if they stir up a lot of negative feelings within you, and, you know, and your intuition will tell you it's not a good idea to get back together with that individual, your intuition is onto something. Okay, I don't see anything here for you. Nothing. Except for that Nine of Swords on the bottom of the deck, which is a card of somebody stressed out, somebody who can't sleep at night, not very positive, all right, Virgo, so I don't think you're taking anybody back in the second half of September. All right, so yeah, that's what I have for you, Virgo, for this reading, uh, for this uh, time period. If this video resonates with you, please like it, please also share and subscribe, and other than that, Virgo, have an amazing the rest of September.